so next up, we have Chen Sun from the University of Iowa, who's going to be talking about GDPR. Hi, everyone. This is Chen Sun. I'm here to present GDPR Archive, establishing the state of the art in GDPR enforcement. This is a drawing work with Evan, Daniel, Andrew, and Surprise. So imagine you are a programmer text with implementing the right to be forgotten. This is for Article 17 in the GDPR, and it says the data subject shall have the right to obtain the erasure of their personal data without undue delay. However, from computing perspective, this article didn't cover all the things in the implementation. In other words, complying with RTDF leads to many uncertainties. For example, the deletion latency, which is how soon should the data be deleted after the request. Or deletion depths, so should we delete the data at the application level or all the way through the hardware? Or deletion granularity, should the controller allow deletion by each individual data item, by categories, or by or, or nothing? Other uncertainty like deletion propagation, which is should the controller inform other controllers or processors that the data subjects has request delete. Well, these are just four examples, and there are many more aspects of RTBF not specified in the law itself. Therefore, this leads to the question, how to reduce uncertainty in complying with GDPR? One way is to track GDPR enforcement in the real world and then adapt the computing system to meet or access the observed standards. To do so, we define state-of-the-art in GDPR enforcement, which is a set of technologies, designs, mechanisms, policies, configurations and the operational practice that has failed to pass the current legal standard of GDPR compliance. In the rest of the talk, I'm going to present how we understand and model how GDPR enforcement works. And then we build an open source system to automatically capture the GDPR SOTA documents. And then I will show the utility of the system. So first, what are the SOTA documents and how to get them? There are three steps in total. The first is we need to find out where the information gets created in the EU ecosystem. It starts from the EU parliaments who create the law, the national parliaments who adopt the law, the data protection authority who actually enforce this law, and the national court and the EU court of justice who rule on this law. And this is just one country. We have 27 different countries in the EU. Each country will do it on their own. Therefore, to ensure the consistency across member nations, there is a European data protection broad. We observe two broad categories of legal content are generated by the ecosystem. One is legal precedent, which mark in blue. There are DPA enforcement, court decisions, and ETPB binding rules. And another is legal guidance, which indicated in gray. They have recommendations, opinions, and reports. We found all the documents are falling into the definition of SOTA documents, so we want to procure all of it. To do so, we design and build a GDPR aware crawler. Let's work through the architecture of the GDPR crawling system. First, we have a complete set of official resources. That is a total of 47 websites consisting of all the SOTA defining documents. Then we build a crawler engine for parsing HTML and downloading documents from this website. And the crawler engine also contains some crawling policies. So all the data we get from the crawler are then processed by the data curator. It will filter out non-GDPR documents, classify file by types, and translate them into English version. After that, we build a label engine that labels the key metadata aspects related to the SOTA document. Some of them are automatically generated, and some of them are manually labeled. 
So now we have reliable and a comprehensive SOTA database, which contains close to 9,000 documents in the first 4.5 years of GDPR. We provide a GitHub and a public website for people to download the entire corpora or explore the enforcement by country, article, penalty, or etc. We name the system as GDPR Archive, which is a portmanteau of GDPR and Archive. It is the first open source GDPR crawler and it has an open access SOTA knowledge base. It consists of 2x more legal precedents and 5x more SOTA documents than the prior work. Okay, let's show what the website looks like. This is the URL. And here you can see every row is an enforcement decision and every column is a metadata of the decision. We provide people to search their desired country by desired document by country, by decision type, company name, and quoted article. In addition, people also can sort by decision date or final amount. Let's see an example. Ireland and company name Meta. There are two results. If you click the first one, you will be directly into our document folder into the in the GitHub. Okay, so you have seen the system. Now the question is, how can GDP archive help? There are many ways it can help and I'm going to show two of it. One is you could track the enforcement of GDPR over the years. And the second is you could help to reduce the uncertainties using the Y negative analyze. Let's look at what the enforcement trends across countries are. The graph shows the top 10 countries with the most GDPR enforcement. The x-axis is the number of documents in the first 4.5 year of GDPR, and the y-axis is the country name. We found GDPR is not implemented uniformly across Europe. Four countries, Spain, Italy, Denmark, and Poland count for 60% of GDPR enforcement. Our analysts also reveal the enforcements are issued frequently and growing over time. On average, two enforcement decisions are issued every day, and year four have 2.7x more decision enforcement than year one. We don't have time to go over the detail. Please read the paper if you are interested. Besides, we are also interested in exploring the financial penalty issued by DPA. This graph group all the enforcement decision into six distinct penalty bins from zero penalty, less than 1,000 penalty, and all the way up to million level penalty. We saw 80% of the fine was less than 10,000 euro and only 1.8% while later end up with million euro fine. This is a reflection of GDPR's proportional penalty, where the fine is determined not just by the infringement, but also by the scale and the scope of its impact. Now let's switch to how GDPR type can help to reduce the uncertainty. To express the idea better, let's take an example. Think of the first day at school. The mother tells the son, you must be a good boy at school. The son is very confused because the definition of what makes one good is too broad. In contrast with another scenario that the parent tells the son, do not do this 10 bad thing at school. The son shows the confidence because he knows how to behave. This is the spirit of why negative approach that we use in our analysis. Okay, so back to our focus. We know the law, including GDPR, tend to be underspecified and all encompassing from a computing perspective. In contrast, our SOTA allows people to identify how organizations have failed to comply with GDPR. Therefore, using the Y negative approach, people can eliminate the, the, the failure reason that exists in the SOTA database to reduce the risk and uncertainties. Let's see how it works on one article RTBF. Doing that, we analyze all the enforcement that cite this article in the first 4.5 years. So there are a total of 175 documents. And then we extract the main reason that leads to the enforcement. We come up with this frequency graph. 
And the x-axis is the filter reason that can be grouped into five categories, user interface, verifications, policy resolution, application software, and the data management. And their enforcement frequency are shown on the y-axis. We find that 80% of the failure are come from the user interface and the policy categories, which show an important thing to us is we need to design a good UI system and develop a robust policy for handling the RTBI exceptions. We also interest in exploring the top five failure region. We found two of it are from the user interface categories. They are never, controller never acknowledged the RTBF request or they didn't respond within 30 days. Two of it from the policy resolution, which are the controller misinterpreted exceptions allowed by GDPR or they ignore the interface with non-GDPR laws. Another is from the application software where the application didn't enable deletion. So in summary, we found there exists uncertainty in complying with GDPR when translating the legal intention into computing implementations. To fix this situation, we proposed a method to establish a reliable source of ground truth in GDPR enforcement. Then we build an open source crawler and a knowledge base called GDPR Archive. This is the largest ever collection of GDPR enforcement, and it can help people to get novel insights from the real world enforcement. One last thing I want to say before I end up the presentation is we hope the people can check our website, gdprchive.org. We love to hear about your use case or any suggestions for improvement. Appreciate your time and thank you so much. Thank you for the talk. Uh, first question, do you plan to continue the data collection and do you plan to automate the labeling that was manual? Um, uh, yes, we are planning to do the labeling collection like for like three months, like in this frequency. And we try to like explore some automatic way to label in that, like for example, using some BERT or some language model. And there are some, for the reason we stopped here because we didn't get a high accuracy for now, but I think for the future plan is we want to study how to get a high accuracy for the automatic labeling part. Uh, next question, do you have any demographic info about the nature of the fines? For instance, tech companies versus health centers versus banks? Um, and if so, are they consistent? Mm. So I think in our paper we have some we have some finding about this part. Um, but uh, you know, we we only have a like high level idea about the fine. What's the country issue? The big fine, like or like what's the kind of the fine? Which article regular, Which article will issue the big fine? But we don't have like a demographic info about the fines. But I think we are just provide a big level, like a like a big database for people, so people can use our data set to finding some demographic demographic info by themselves. Sorry about that. As the GDPR is implemented differently across the EU, did you find any inconsistencies between the countries or cases uh, which might have been ruled on differently in different countries? Um, yes, there are some countries. In our paper, we said there are four countries, the Spain, Italy, Denmark, and Poland, they are issue a lot of enforcement, and also the Spain issue a lot of fines. But like there are some inconsistency because some countries will issue a lot of enforcement documents, but some country, but this country will not issue a big fine for it. So there have some inconsistency. Okay, let's thank the speaker again.